welcome to the new year oh. and to the Office of Federal Emergency Relief Programs Office Hour. As we do every month, we'll start with quick introductions in case there's new folks in the crowd. Uh, my name is Shelley Shassi Jandro, and I'm the director of the office. I'm Karen Kusiak. I'm the coordinator of CARES, uh, but also CRISA and ARP, which are more active right now. I'm Kevin Harrington, and I'm the Gear and EANS coordinator. I'm Maisha Shah. I'm, I'm the uh, fiscal coordinator for federal emergency grants. Hello, I'm Deanna Roberge. I am one of the management analysts. Good morning. I'm Terry Beal, and I'm the other management analyst. Hi, I'm Natalie Owens, and I'm the procurement analyst. Well, he doesn't trouble. So as usual, as we do every month, we just want to highlight a few things. So today we're going to look at the performance report, a uh, reminder for the business manager's office hour, as well as the ESER dashboard. And again, our goal is just to be sure that we're, we're making everyone aware of the use of these funds and how to be effective and aligned with the regulations that are set before us within statute. All right, um, so we're about up to the time when we're gonna be asking districts to complete the year four performance report, which uh, is going to be the reporting for all the ESSER funds because some of you may have had ESSER one active during the fiscal year 2023. And uh, this year four report is going to be more demanding or uh, ask more questions, I should say, than uh, previous reports. So I'm just gonna, and the, the summary, the documents that we got from the US Department of Ed, we, we've selected part of that document that highlights the key summary and we've put uh, key changes, summarizes the key changes and have, they've put them into this, uh, we've put it into this slide. But I read through uh, the report very carefully yesterday and I, I highlighted a couple of things that I think um, I, if I were a business manager, I would want some early warning about. Uh, and I'll just preface this, I'm gonna run through about three or four key changes, but I'm gonna preface this by saying, we will submit and we will uh, upload onto our website, a PDF of all of the questions and a Word document of all of the questions. And the reason we do the Word document is, is likely because you're going to need to take a couple of pages of this report and hand it over to some program people or some principals, because we're gonna be asking questions about what students according, not by name, but what students according to 13 to 14 different categories of identity uh, participated in, in some of the programs. So some of the key changes are, uh, there's gonna be a question probably number B2, clarifies that we're collecting information by expenditure, by the accounting object. So there's gonna be a whole you know, page or so where you're gonna be telling us about the accounting object and what you expended during you know, fiscal year 23, but also information about the activities. So there'll be another section about the activities that were funded. Uh, there's going to be a question about hiring key uh, and retaining specific positions. And as I read it yesterday, talking off the top of my head, it was special educators, nurses, people who have been uh, difficult to find, English language teachers um, or bilingual teachers. So there's going to be a question about that. Uh, it was optional last year, and now it's going to be mandatory that, that we report on it. Uh, we're also going to ask LEAs to identify activities and interventions that were in that 20% uh, set aside to address learning loss, so minimum of 20%. Um, and uh, within that question, within that prompt, uh, it's going to ask you to implement the listed activities as well as um, saying you use them, yes or no, and also the amount of funds expended for, let's say it's summer programming, extended year tutoring. And this is the last one I'll uh, just provide an overview for. You're going to be talk, you're going to report the interventions and also participation by those 13 to 14 categories of students. And by that, I mean, whether or not they're identified for special education, English language learners, low income, you're probably familiar with that. 
There are some other questions I said I wasn't say, going to say anymore, but when I, the, what, a key one that I remembered is there's part of this that uh, is going to be asking questions and probing about chronic absenteeism, attendance, and instances of bullying and harassing, harassment. As Karen mentioned, what we will do is, <clears throat> excuse me, we know the timeline is quick. So to put it on your radar, we have to have this report into our system to the US Department of Ed starting May 14th. So we're already in January, so we know that this timeline is going to be quick. So as Karen mentioned, we will have a PDF and a Word document of the report that will be transferred into GEMS so that we can collect that information. We've started thinking about the questions that we can retain from last year and move into this year's performance report, but we're also in the process of developing new questions to get to that more granular data, as Karen mentioned. But I will say the absolute, absolute latest that we can even anticipate this report being due at an LEA level is mid-April-ish, because we need to turn that information around and submit it to the US Department of Ed. We as a team have not determined what that due date is going to be because we're looking at capacity in regards to our office, as well as the portal for our performance report from the US Department of Ed doesn't open until the beginning of May. So we don't actually see what it looks like in the US Department of Ed system until the beginning of May. We just use this data collection form to be able to start doing that collection of the content that we're going to need to submit into that report. So we move a little cautiously in regards to being sure that whatever we ask is something that's going to be used. But now that we have that data collection form and the date in which the portal is going to open, our team has already started the process of determining what questions we, we can maintain, any new questions, as well as the timeline for you folks. Our intention is going to be very similar to what we had structured last year where we have open office hours just related to the performance report. So every week for an hour, a member or multiple members of our team will be here available for any questions that you have related to the performance report. And we'll also do a walkthrough once the GEM system is completely finalized with this performance report so that we have detailed information about each section so we can walk through those questions. And even if you may not be able to attend, we have that as a resource for you to, to um, view at your own leisure. Again, we'll take feedback from you folks. We feel that structure last year worked well and was helpful and beneficial to the districts. But if there are other things that our team can do to support you folks in the completion of this performance report for FY23, so really looking at those expenditures from July 1st, 2022 to June 30th of 20. 23, um, that will be a good start for you folks to identify what it was that you submitted in GEMS for reimbursement. And I think that's the key thing. You may have acquired some expenses, but if you did not submit those expenses to, to us as a reimbursement request, the U.S. Department of Ed does not know that you requested money or expenses during that time frame. So we are only looking at what was requested, the date in which it was requested and paid out in FY23, not when the activity actually generated and when the expenses were generated, because we and the Department of Ed are not aware of those activities until you submit it into the reimbursement system. And last year, what we did was we also pre-populated that dollar value for each funding source, which I'm going to write down because I see Cynthia nodding her head. Um, we have a little bit of work to do that, but I think that was super helpful for districts last year. So I think that's a good initiative that we take on again this year. So this highlights the business manager's office hour. Um, and we'd ask that you share this with your business managers. The following federal program offices, Office of Federal Emergency Relief, ESSER, um, Elementary and Secondary Education Act, ESEA, 
Office of Special Services and Inclusive Education, IDEA, Career and Technical Education, Perkins, and Office of Child Nutrition will host an office hour the fourth Thursday of every month starting started in November at 10 a.m. that will focus on physical matters like invoicing, time and effort, policies and procedures, and or maintenance of effort. And here is a link for the registration for anybody who wants to register for that. And this next slide is um, a link to our dashboard, um, which has a lot of um, good information on it. Um, you're able to go and see um, most anything. So if you uh, want that, there would be the link for the uh, ESSER dashboard. I will preface this by uh, the data that you have here in front of you is uh, almost two months old. However, it is something that we shared with our business managers when we were invited to the main ASBO meeting in November. And I think, you know, we're in the, tis the season of colds. I completely understand that. We got the friendly letter Monday evening, even before returning to school about RSV and COVID coming back and keep staying home if you're ill. Um, but essentially in the new year might be a good opportunity for you folks as program coordinators um, to return to your business manager and talk about where you are. And this is related to financial matters, but talk to your business manager about where we are, what has been submitted for reimbursements. Again, a little outdated data. So we don't have 318 days left of ARP. If you minus about 60 from that, that's more uh, aligned to where we are. What this diagram shows you is how much we had remaining in the middle of November, which was $200 million at all of the SAUs that we have in our district, in our state. And the bubbles on the top is the percentage. So if we were to use a timeline that was illustrated by ARP, which your application was due on 9-30-2021, we would anticipate that you have 100% of your funds remaining because we were just starting the program. 9-30-2024, we would make the assumption that you are at 0% of spending because you're at the end of the program performance period. So we are here, right here, 12-31-23, uh, right? That was just last week. And you should be anywhere between 25 to 0%. And currently we only have 53 districts in that bracket right there. And there's still $11.5 million just in that bracket. Um, so you can see where we are currently. As of November, we still had 44 SAUs sitting between 175% that they had not requested reimbursement. And as you can see that 75% within the timeline was July 1st of 2022. So we're gonna leave you with some resources and I know there's a couple messages in the chat box that I missed uh, in case you need any of our contact information. But in the meantime, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can take a look at that chat box and open it up to any questions that you folks may have.